with the opening, we see a welcome screen which shows about uh, where it is developed in the description of the program. Then starting for a new analysis, we can reset the data. It makes all the input zeros. And then we have like two cell types, input cell and output cell. Input is like orange in color, output contains some formula, and those are like output values. We can start with the bridge details. You can find the SFN number, PID number, all those in, in the detailed drawing. You can insert total number of columns corresponding, uh, looking at the design drawing, and you can generate. Based on those, uh, drawing is generated, the informative drawing we talk about. You can also toggle between if that is asymmetric or symmetric. Like for symmetric, we perform the analysis up to center line. For asymmetric, like full analysis is uh, performed. Then you, we have like all the variables. We can look in the engineering design drawing and find the variables like C1, which is cantilever span, C2, uh, the, the distance between the second span, the column width, we can find it. And we can select between if it is circular or rectangular, the column. Then it, then it comes to the factor load and their position, where we have to input all these manually based on P1, A1, P2, A2. We can look into engineering drawing and input these values. If the spacing of the garter, which is most of the case, then we can just input these three values and we can generate the load table. So it generates, it populates the table automatically. After all the inputs are made, then we can generate the drawing. Uh, it generates a case based on all the inputs we made. So we can see a drawing is generated and it says uh, check for the accuracy. If there is any error, we can again go back and regenerate it again. So if if this is okay, let's say the accuracy is right, then we check if the peer cap is deep or not. Therefore, there might be like many reasons. You can see like there are six reasons. Some might be deep, some might be slender. But if the majority of reasons are deep, we go forward with the program. So in this case, it shows us uh, instruction if the peer cap is deep or not. If it is deep, we go forward, we make the material input, we input the concrete strength, the rebar strength, uh, the clear cover, stereo bar area, all everything from engineering design, design drain, there is nothing extra. Then we input the resistance factor, which are based on class 5.5.4.2 of ESTO code 2017. Again, this can be updated with the new version. Then we input the reinforcement details, which are based on the reasons. So if there is like reinforcement change in any reason, we need to update it accordingly. So the main concern is like where the reinforcement is changing. So for every reason, we can input the longitudinal reinforcement, which is the total area on the top and centroid from the top, the to bottom area and centroid from the bottom. Then the other input, the transverse reinforcement, For the transverse enforcement, we need to insert how many legs do we have, like in each region. Like in some region, we might have like two legs. In some region, we might have four legs. So we need to input the number of legs and the spacing. For the crack control enforcement, we need to input a drawing is generated inside to show how many legs do you have. You can count the number of legs and the spacing of the uh, crack control enforcement. And it checks with the minimum crack control enforcement according to code. If it is greater than the minimum required, then it is good. Otherwise, uh, reduction in the strength is taken. The next input is bearing plate details. We can input the length of the bearing and uh, width of the bearing. Then we check the reinforcement development. We input the hook length. Based on the hook length, it calculates if it is a straight bar or it is a hook bar. So for those, it calculates uh, the basic development length. Uh, and those basic development length goes up one some modification factor to calculate the total development length. We have yes, no option. We can just, uh, from, we can select from the drop down list and we can calculate the reinforcement capacity multiplier. If it is equ equitably developed, it is one, either it is less than one. Then after all those input, we can generate the output model. Now it will show our peer cap and the certain time model and the inflation ratio corresponding to each member. Uh, it is fast, it takes like five to 10 seconds at maximum to generate the model. So therefore, we have our starting time model and the peer cap here. Uh, here we have peer cap, we have the loads, we have the reactions, and then we have all the uh, we have ties indicated by red color, and then we have uh, struts by blue color, and the node which are which are the intersection of the truss member, and we have the utilization ratios, which is the ratio of a demand to capacity as we talked already. And there is one more thing, like this model can be improved by the use of vertical die. As we already talked, like 
there can be many models for the same uh, pure cap. So therefore, we have option for 0, 1, 0, this thing. So 0 is for do not use tie, 1 is for use tie. So you can see we, we have four load path, 1, 2, 3, 4. So here we have we used one vertical tie. So in the second load path, we have used vertical tie. For second load path, you can see there is 1. So if you if we do not want to use any vertical tie, we can just select 0 and regenerate again the model. So we can, uh, so this works for the optimization. We can select the best model for our peer cap upon just a couple of uh, iterations. Then we can regenerate again. It uh, in a couple of seconds it gives a new model, new set of utilization ratio, and uh, and we can see the utilization ratio and compare with the previous model to find like which one is uh, the perfect model for us, which which one is the optimized model for us. So it also checks the top nodal and the bottom nodal capacities. It also checks the top node and the bottom node capacities. So in the top node, we check the concrete on the bearing, uh, on the pier cap under the bearing. On the bottom, we check the concrete on the pier cap uh, below the pier cap, uh, on the column below the pier cap. So we can see the node A, E, K. These are our top node on the pier cap and the other side on the bottom node. The calculation details is hidden. Uh, if anyone is interested, like uh, where are these data coming from, we can just show and we can click on the button and we can see all the calculation details. 